Elon Musk has never had such a crazy ambition like this. 50 starships flying every three days. Even aircraft have a hard time reaching this amount of flights. Do you believe that SpaceX can achieve this? How will they do it? Let's go over all the fine details in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Musk is going big brain mode. SpaceX's billionaire founder and CEO outlined some ambitious goals for the company's Starship Mars colonization system during a flurry of Twitter posts last week. The Starship architecture consists of a big spaceship called Starship, which Musk has said will be capable of carrying up to 100 people. Boosting it out of the Earth's atmosphere will be the Super Heavy Booster. Both of these vehicles will reach 9,000 tons or 20 million pounds of force at sea level and deliver over 200 tons of payload to a useful orbit with full and rapid reusability. Indeed, rapid and frequent reuse is key to Musk's overall vision, which involves cutting the cost of spaceflight enough to make Mars colonization and other bold exploration feats economically feasible. And frequent reuse is a bit of an understatement, it would seem. In the next tweet, he said, 50 rockets flying every three days on average enables over a megaton of payload to orbit per year, enough to build a self-sustaining city on Mars. Well, let's look at the numbers a bit here. 50 times per three days means approximately 160 launches per week, 500 launches per month, and then that would translate to around 6,100 launches per year. 6,100 launches per year. That's also about around two hours between launches if they are divided between three launch pads. But two thirds of those launches might be tankers, in which case the limit is speed of an orbital propellant transfer. While these numbers are too great to even think about, this situation raises significant concerns regarding the immense amount of fuel that SpaceX will require for the Starship missions. According to senior spaceflight reporter Eric Ralph, these operations would consume approximately 25 million tons of liquid oxygen and 6 million tons of liquid methane. When considering the overall consumption of liquid nitrogen, liquid oxygen, and liquid methane, the staggering figure amounts to approximately 8,000 tanker trucks per day. Clearly, this level of demand implies that SpaceX will need to implement cryogenic pipelines, establish on-site production slash liquefaction slash refinement capabilities, or a combination combination of both. The magnitude of the challenge becomes evident when considering the need to construct facilities at every new launch pad location desired by SpaceX. A plant may have to be built everywhere SpaceX wants a new pad, and the logistics, especially power needs, will be insane. On top of that, on the way to reach that ambition, we also need to remember that whenever SpaceX conducts a launch, it relies on range support. Vandenberg Space Force Base in California runs the Western Range. The Eastern Range in Florida relies on Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Both ranges started 2022 with a Department of Defense Office of the Inspector General report warning that neither range's older technology can reliably cope with launch increases. It noted that both rely on aging equipment, some no longer manufactured. The report cautioned that the outdated equipment would hobble anticipated launch surges. Of course, the concept concept of a surge indicates relief in launch activity will occur in the form of an ebb. However, if SpaceX succeeds with Starship, the surge will become a tsunami that plateaus. While equipment modernization benefits both ranges and curtails their eBay parts replacement strategy, there is no guarantee that SpaceX will succeed in launching up to 6,000 starships in a year, as it has not successfully launched one yet. The Space Force is probably aware of SpaceX's plans, but it would not be reasonable for the service to upgrade its technology solely on SpaceX's projection. Both ranges use Autonomous Flight Safety Systems, or AFSS, a system required of companies wishing to continue using the ranges after October of 2025. 
Despite the upgrade, neither will be ready for 6,100 Starship launches. One reason is that a Space Force contract to implement range operations modification slash modernization efforts will not be awarded until March of 2024. That has not stopped the ranges from attempting to get ahead of the launch activity increases. But do remember that the FAA is supposed to protect the public and accomplish its job through launch licensing, reviews, and other tools. Well, it is a slow and cautious government bureaucracy. Undoubtedly, the FAA's launch vehicle licensing will require some revamps as Starship launches increase. However, the more significant challenge for the FAA is that it must somehow integrate those 6,000 plus Starship launches with airspace activities such as airline flights. It has worked on some projects that can help quickly clear busy airspace before, but will it implement those projects to deal with dozens of daily launches coming from the eastern range? The FAA is notoriously sloth-like in implementing its latest air traffic monitoring system, NextGen. It started with NextGen improvements in 2007, and the system won't be finished until 2030. So, while NextGen might help the FAA move air traffic around quickly to clear the airspace for space launches, would SpaceX's launches increases spur the FAA to move quickly with NextGen? You know, speed things up a little bit? Well, as we've already seen with NextGen, the FAA is not so quick. Because its mandate protects the public, it will not accelerate a process or program in response to SpaceX's demands. The FAA already demonstrated its propensity to ignore SpaceX's concerns while conducting its programmatic environmental assessments of the company's Boca Chica site in Texas. That dogged adherence to process means that SpaceX's goal for even launching a Starship three times a day will remain just that, a goal, until the FAA or some other government agency implements a system that can handle the increased launches. And much like the ranges, the FAA is probably aware of SpaceX's Starship plans, but is taking a wait-and-see approach. SpaceX may have a solution to these challenges. Offshore launch platforms. The company began refitting two deep water oil drilling rigs as launch and landing platforms for its Starship system in 2021. The rigs Deimos and Phobos, named after the moons of Mars, would host Starship launches out at sea sometime in 2022, Musk initially stated. However, despite initial activities surrounding those platforms, work on them appears to have paused. Various guesses have floated around as to why that might be, but the pause indicates that the launch platforms will not be ready in 2023. However, even if the platforms were ready, it's unclear how the FAA would view them. It likely would argue that even if the platforms were beyond U.S. waters, the fact that a U.S. company is operating them would make them subject to the FAA's rules. There would also be a need for range support, as there is plenty of air and ship traffic that would be impacted by several Starship launches each day in the Caribbean. Another launch alternative for Starship appears to be SpaceX's Starbase, the Starship system's test launch and landing facility in Boca Chica, Texas. SpaceX completed building the system's launch tower in 2021. However, the most relevant reason why Starbase will not be supporting dozens of Starship launches per year is that SpaceX proposed in the environmental assessment that it would launch Starship from there up to five times per year. Additionally, Musk has suggested that noise considerations might encourage the company to launch Starships from offshore platforms. Both make increases in Starbase's launch cadence unlikely. It is clear that it is unrealistic to expect a Starship to launch three times a day in the next four to five years. The Eastern Range, which is the primary launch site for SpaceX, cannot support that tempo. The FAA is also not ready for the increased launch operations. Alternative launch locations, such as SpaceX's ocean spaceports, are not ready, and the company's Starbase will not significantly contribute towards achieving that goal. 
goal. In order to launch 100 starships per year, SpaceX would need to build a launch site and significantly increase the capacity of the Eastern Range. The FAA would also need to approve a significant increase in launch operations. It is possible that SpaceX will be able to achieve this goal eventually. So while it may not happen tomorrow, SpaceX's and Elon Musk's goal of 100 Starship launches per year is still a goal that could revolutionize space exploration and that just about wraps it up for today's episode let me know your thoughts in the comment section below remember everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos and for that we thank you so much and we hope to see you again next time